Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, welcome to Tucker Christian Church. And I know we started 20 seconds early. <laughs> so we'll, we'll just have to do that. So glad everybody is here today. Um, we have, it's my privilege today to introduce our guest speaker, um, who is Dr. Denzel Holness. We don't have a doctor speak to us very often. <laughs> so this is a special blessing for us. Um, Dr. Holness um, attended Minnesota Bible College and Milligan College and received his doctorate in ministry from the Interdenominational Theological Center in Atlanta, which is a very prestigious seminary. So, and he served as the minister of the Central Christian Church in Atlanta for, let me do my math here, that's 40 years? 39. Well, nope. we can round that up to 40 if you'd like. <laughs> we'll, we'll, give you a, we'll, give you extra, we'll give you an extra year. And so um, this is a great privilege for us to get to hear from Dr. Holness. So, and I've already told him that we will not introduce him when it's time for him to speak. Okay? So, as we begin our service, I'd like to read from 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verses 31 through 36. It says, let the, let the heavens be glad and the earth rejoice. Tell all the nations the Lord reigns. Let the sea and everything in it shout his praise. Let the fields and their crops burst out with joy. Let the trees of the forest rustle with praise, for the Lord is coming to judge the earth. Yes. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His faithful love endures forever. Cry out, save us, O God of our salvation. Gather and rescue us from among the nations, so we can thank your holy name and rejoice and praise you. Praise the Lord, the God of Israel, who lives from everlasting to everlasting. And all the people shouted, Amen. Amen. And praise Amen. the Lord. So that's what we're here to do today is to praise the Lord. Yes. Let's stand and pray and then we that's what we'll do is praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to meet together, to worship you, to praise your holy name. I pray that you will help us to worship you with all that we have, all that we are, and that we will be enthusiastic and joyful as we do so. In Christ's name I pray, amen. amen. <coughs> Thank you. 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, your name is worthy. Or as the prayer that you taught us to say says, hallowed. Lord, you are. Your name is holy, worthy, and we're just so thankful that you are a great God who is so, so much, not something that, not a God that we've created in our own image, but a God who created us in his own image. Lord, we thank you for so many blessings that you have given to us that you've given us this church, your family here in Tucker. Lord, we thank you for this nation that we live in, for this community. And we know it's not perfect, that there are people who don't want to follow your will and they act out in ways that bring distress to us and to you too, whether they are people that did mass shootings on the south side of Atlanta just this week or people who we heard in the news about a man who may have committed multiple murders. Lord, we know that these people need you and we pray that they will find you. And we know that your love and your grace and your mercy are enough that you can restore even people like that. And we thank you, Lord, for our families that you have blessed us with, um, whether we are the ones being taken care of in a family or the ones who are taking care of others. And Lord, we thank you for our friends, our jobs, just the opportunity that we have to be out and about and just glory in the creation that you have made, the, the beauty of this earth. But Lord, we also have many concerns. Um, we have people that are concerned about health issues. We pray for Billy and for Helen and for Robin at this time. And there are other people with other issues in their life. So, Lord, we pray for Ben and for Samantha. And we know that you can help them get to the place that you want them to be. Lord, we pray for our youngest people, for Hudson and Lydia and Owen and Malachi that as they are starting to get ready for a new year of school, Lord, we know that school is always tough on kids and it's so much harder than it used to be that there's just so much turmoil in the school and so much that's not a place of safety anymore and Lord we pray that you'll keep these children safe and we pray that you'll help them to want to learn so that they will grow up to be the adults that you want them to be Lord we pray for Paul as he leads us as our elder we pray that you will continue to give him wisdom. 
and that you will give us the willingness to follow where we need to go as we're searching for a new minister lord i pray for the search committee that we will be looking for the person that you have actually already chosen for us you know who you want to be our next minister and you are just waiting for us to figure it out lord i pray that we will go in the direction that you would have us to go and that we will make decisions that are the best for this church and for your kingdom especially here in tucker lord we pray for the new minister whoever he may be that he will come to us with a zeal and an enthusiasm that will motivate us to shine your light brighter in Tucker than we have. I pray for Dr. Holness as he comes to open your word to us today that we will receive what he has to say with open minds and open hearts. And Lord, I pray that you will forgive us for the things that we have done wrong and for the things that we have not done that you want us to do. And I thank you especially for your son, Jesus Christ, who makes forgiveness of those things possible. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. <coughs>
electronics was nice, but <laughs> you know, we this is time we've come to remember Jesus and his death upon the cross and uh, one of the things that uh, we've been seeing as we've been watching the video uh, <coughs> with Joseph Miss, thank you, <laughs> uh, is the realness that it puts into it and the expression on people's faces that we don't get when we read this. Some of us are better at imagining that when we read and kind of visualizing what we're reading about, but it's so good to see that in people's faces and especially the bystander. You know, it's one thing to see the excitement of the apostles and the 120 even but to see the expression on the faces of that centurion standing off in the distance or even a rabbi or a priest that is having a hard time accepting Jesus as the Messiah and Jesus' life was just different. And that's what our life was about. It should be about and uh, so that people see him in us. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to read some verses now from Matthew, the 27th chapter, verses uh, uh, 45 and following about the crucifixion. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness came over the land. About three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, Rama, Sabachna, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He is calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with vinegar, put it on a staff, and offered it to Jesus to drink. <clears throat> the rest said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rock split, the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tomb after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those with him regarding Jesus saw the earthquake and saw what was happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely this was the Son of God. Let us take of the loaf and the cup at this time. go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come here and to worship you, to sing praises to your name. And our Father, I pray that you will enlighten us and bless us today with the message. And our Father, that we might go out and be a witness that others might see Jesus in us 
brought our life proclaim your goodness and your love now father we just pray that you continue to be with us watch over us and forgive us our father when we sin against you for i pray these things in jesus name amen let's pray dear heavenly father thank you for all you've done for us this week and precious heavenly father help us to give back to the community to our missionaries uh, strengths help us heavenly father to give back in terms of our talents our financial blessings and especially our time and lord we love you so much and we pray each moment heavenly father will be dedicated to you we know that we're in search of a new minister and hopefully heavenly father we will embrace the person that you already have for us thank you precious lord and we ask that you would help us get through this coming week and we know about the consequences of following you but lord you're our strength and our hope thank you in the precious name of jesus amen So when Ed asked me, first of all, excuse me, good morning. Good morning. <laughs> when Ed asked me to read the scripture for the uh, preacher today, I asked him if I should read from my Bible, which is the King James Schofield, or from the Bible in the, in the pew there. And so he was like, I didn't ask. And I was like, you need to go ask. <laughs> you know. I grew up with this Bible. I've had it so many years, and I praise God for it, and I love the word that speaks to me through this Bible. This morning, our scripture said, Jesus was speaking, who have ears to hear, let him hear. So I encourage you to hear, not just listen to the word, but to hear his word today. Uh, I'm reading from Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42. So you can read along with me if you have a Bible. Now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat, she sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister have left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, you are careful and troubled about many things. But one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Receive the picture as he comes. It's so good to be with you uh, today. Already I have been blessed. The prayers team was very inspiring. Thank you so much. You really blessed my heart. And by the end, I felt a very inspiring and uplifting prayer. I thank you so much. I'd 
like to also thank some guests this morning, uh, Dr. Rodney and Dr. Nikki and their son, um, uh, Joshua, and Brother Eddie Bonney from Central, and of course my wife, uh, May. It is so good to have you all this morning, and thank you for coming, okay? Thank you. Uh, my sister, um, you are a good reader. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, New chapter uh, 10, and um, verses uh, 30, uh, 8 to 32, and the title of this morning is, It's Time for a Checkup. It's Time for a Checkup. Uh, let me all pray. Loving Father, we thank you for your word. It is by your word we have been called to live. And so, Father, grant to all your people here today, listening ears and receptive hearts, and grant to me your servant, the labor which I need, that I may speak as I ought to speak. In Jesus' name we pray, and God's people say, Amen. 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 Don't get used to my, my pulpit, okay? A little bit awkward this morning, but I certainly um, will try my best. It is always wise for us to get a check up. One day, so the story goes, a certain man who had not been feeling too well for quite some time went to to see the doctor. Well, after thoroughly examining him, the doctor was at a loss to find out exactly what was going on. But rather than admitting that he did not know, and being honest with this man, he asked him this question. Have you ever had this before? Yes, that old man said. Well, the doctor replied, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but you have it again. I hope that poor man got a second opinion. I certainly would. I certainly would. Well, it always was to get a regular checkup. Because uh, sometimes we may feel okay and think okay and look okay, but a checkup may reveal the onset of something serious, something needing immediate attention before it's too late. Likewise, my sisters and my brothers, it's also wise for us to get a spiritual check up. So, in the light of this revealing story about our Lord, at Martha and Mary, I pray this morning that we will check up on ourselves to see, first of all, if we are using our time wisely. According to Dr. Luke, on this occasion, our Lord was a special guest in the home of Martha and Mary. Yes, yes. And being a gracious hostess, Martha decided to fix our Lord, and maybe also for some of his disciples, a very big meal. Yes, yes, yes. A big I wonder what was on that menu. What would be on your menu? Yes, yes. However, on 
ما هيك مثلا مين ماذا يمكن او سيستر بسبب sit at a lord's feet yes, yes. listening to him learning of him and fellowshipping with yes, him yes. and our lord in telling us this that Mary had chosen that good part which yes. would not be taken away from her makes it clear to us yes. that Mary had made a wise decision yes, yes. that day. Yes, thank you, Jesus. And brothers and my sisters, may I remind us that we are using our time wisely when we spend time with the Lord in His Word. I heard the story about a traveling statesman, a statesman who had this unforgettable experience one night. That night he was awakened by the, the, the cries and the screams of his fellow guest. You see, the hotel in which he was staying was on fire. And many of his fellow guests, in the group of, of panic and fear of the, the raging fires, were screaming and running, and some were jumping out of the window, some to certain death. However, the salesman, although being fully aware of the danger he was in, he did a strange and unusual thing. He stood still yes, Lord. in his room and tuned into the Lord yes. as he had done for years, tuned in for guidance in that situation. Yes, yes. Suddenly he found himself repeating these verses and words from Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will serve the Lord. He is my, my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. As he repeated these words, he began experiencing a strange calm. And then he began receiving specific instructions. Like to use the blanket to, 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 to close the, the bottom of the, 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 the door, keeping out the, the smoke. To use the, 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 the sheets to, to make a rope. And then to go to the window just in time yes. and then to begin to let himself down and just at that moment a fellow man below saw him uh -huh. and positioned his letter right underneath his window and thus saving that man yes. in the nick of time. We saw the telephone and ask this question. Why was this man saved while so many of the guests jumped to their deaths that night? He further asked, was not God willing to save them too? The obvious answer is yes. He was willing to save them. But unlike that salesman, they were not used to spending time with the Lord in his word, listening to him. 
So, in the time of crisis, in the time of danger, he could not give them the, the word they needed for that moment. Believers, I wonder how often some of us fail to get the word we need because of our failure to spend the quality time yes, yes. with the Lord. Well, we always remember these words of Jesus. He says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so I beg you, my brother, I beg you, my sister, take time to be with the Lord in his word as often as you can. And then, we are using our time wisely when we take time to pray. We find these timely and encouraging words in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14. Yes. In my people, they are called by my name and shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. God says, then will I hear from heaven. And they forgive their sin and will heal the land. If ever there was a time when we needed to pray to God to heal this land, it is now. Now when this land is facing an unprecedented crisis, now when this land is in, in danger of, of being Torn asunder by, by bitter partisan party politics and mortgages. When there is a climate of intolerance, lies, disinformation, misinformation pervading the land. When there is a profound lack of reverence for life. Then believers, even our children, yes. are no longer safe in our schools because of the epidemic of gun violence. My God. My God. Yes, if ever there was a time when we needed to pray to God to, to heal this land, it is not when even our churches. Of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ are being divided by bitter partisan politics yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. and monitors. Mm -hmm. And sadly, we are forgetting that the true and living God is neither a Republican nor a Democrat. The God who said is neither pro Trump. They're anti-Biden, they're anti-Biden and yes. pro-Trump. Yes, the God we serve believers yes. is the God of everybody. Yes. 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 He is the non-discriminating God. Yes. That is, is a God who loves everyone. Yes. Democrats, yes. Republicans, yes. Independents, yes. Black yes. and White. God loves every single human being. It's a sad and tragic thing that the churches by the end are becoming divided over politics. The church that has been called to bear witness to our unity and reconciliation in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so I pray today that we check on ourselves to see if we're using our time wisely. And then to see also if we are too busy. Lord have mercy. Martha, Martha, Martha. 
Check up to see if we are too busy. You know, let me say this this morning. We are too busy if we are in danger of losing our health. Lord, have mercy. Think about this. Certainly, on this occasion, Martha had become so busy preparing a, a big meal that she became upset frustrated, angry, and overwhelmed in the service of the Lord. Sadly, she had become so busy that she lost her peace of mind and joy in the service of the Lord. Sadly, she had become so busy that she was in danger of becoming a nervous wreck. In danger of falling apart. You know, some time ago, I, I, I came across this, I read this. That compared to all the developed countries, Americans work the hardest and take less vacation. Americans work the hardest and take less vacation. But I wonder if we don't pay a price for that in terms of the, the level of, of stress and restlessness and sleeplessness and lack of physical and emotional well-being. I, I wonder. I wonder if some of you here this morning are paying the price for being too busy. And so they listen to these uh, terribly and reassuring words found in Psalm 127 and verse 2 from the Living Bible. Listen, it is senseless for you to work so hard from early morning until late at night, uh, 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 seeing that you will starve to death. Jesus, Jesus, Listen. Jesus. Uh -huh. For God wants his lovings to get their proper rest. Yes, yes. God wants his loved ones. Yes, yes. God wants us yes, to get our proper rest. And believers, we are, if we, if, if we are in danger of losing our sense of priority, then we are too busy. You know, please know. But on this occasion, instead of call, calling Martha, mm -hmm. that is, and giving her a peace of her mind, you know, by the way, would you have done that? Instead of calling her sister Mary and giving her a piece of her mind, because she, you know, she was angry. Maybe she was thinking Mary was so lazy. Instead of doing that, she angrily went to the Lord, disrupting the teaching session and angrily accuse him, saying, Lord, don't you care? I, I can just see her. I can just see her. Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me alone? She said the Lord had not killed him off her. I wonder if sometimes, sometimes Jesus. you may not feel that deep down the Lord does not care enough for you. Yes, Father. When we're tempted Jesus. to feel that way, 
Remember these very timely and true words. The writer says, does Jesus care? Oh, yes, he cares. I know he cares. His heart is touched with my grief when the days are weary. And they do get weary sometimes. And the long nights dry. Oh, and they do get dreary sometimes. Long nights. I know my Savior will care. Notice then. After complaining to the Lord. Look what she did to the Lord. She ordered him. Sister, her to come and help me. Yes, Jesus. Think about that. Ordering the Lord to do anything. You know, let me say this by the way. If you want to keep your job, don't forget your place. Like Martha. And order your boss to do anything. You know, many, many years ago, I was working on it in Miami, Jacksonville, the hospital. And one morning, the morning, I went into the, 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 the seclusion room and I saw a big mess in the room. Made by one of the the patients. Oh. And it was Saturday, so there was only, only a few of us there. Oh. And the nurse and I went back there, and when I looked at all that mess, oh. I forgot my place. Jesus. And I said to the nurse, what are we uh -huh. going to do about it? Uh -huh. She says, what do you mean by we? I got in there when you do that. I have forgotten my place. When I thought about my wife, and I thought about my children, and the way I just humbled myself. <laughs> and did the cleaning. You know, the Lord, our Lord is so patient. Yes, he is. And so understanding. And so kind. Notice, notice what he, notice what he says here to 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 to, to not again. Uh, and by the way, I am I'm fighting in laryngitis, so sometimes my voice goes off again. So be with me. Notice what he says here to her. He says now, and Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, they were careful or anxious. And troubled or bothered about many things. Oh, that's a big meal. But my mother, dear, only one thing is needful. And Mary have chosen that good part, which will never be taken away from her. Believers, I believe that. And the Lord was saying this to her. Martha, Martha. Instead of spending so much time in the kitchen fixing that, that big meal, getting so upset, you should have fixed a small meal. But don't stay away from church because the pastor is coming to visit you. Then you should have drawn me, your sister, and sitting at my feet, learning of me, and fellowshipping with me. But not only was he saying this, not only was he 
rebuke him, Martha. Not only was he also commanding Mary, but he was also implicitly warning yes, yes. Martha of this. Jesus. The danger of losing her sense of priority. Yes, yes. And by the way, we all face that danger of losing our sense of priority. Yes. Sadly, it is so easy for us to get so busy that we have little time for the word. Little time for prayer. Little time for the things of the kingdom. Yes, yes. Sadly, it's so easy for us to get so busy measuring in my arms. And by the way, in danger. Yes, it is so easy for us to put our thought to know what we ought to do today. One thing, one thing is needful and Mary has chosen that part. My friend, we are here only for a brief time. I'm almost 81. Would you believe that? Yeah. I'm almost 81. And I keep on reminding myself that my time is just around the corner. I know Sister Mary doesn't like to hear that. But one day, one day, many of my friends are over there. My friend, have you accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Yes, yes. Remember today is the day of salvation. Yes. Remember yes. time is now fleeting. The moments are passing, passing from you and from me. Shadows are gathering. Yes. Death's night is coming. Mm -hmm. Coming for you yes. and for me. When I was thinking last night, I was so deeply touched by the news of those poor, poor persons who were gone down last night. Yesterday, they did not have that in mind. And yet, a crazy man use a gun and cut them down so senselessly. The shadows are given. And so my friend, come home. While you still have a chance. While the day of mercy is still open. While it is called today, today. because tomorrow oh, there will be too late. Oh, Amen. 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 Amen.
shopping or whatever um, let's have our bulletin stay in line with what it is they've asked for lunch we're doing this on the third let's see wait a minute hold on okay 13th of August I was getting my you guys know in Sunday school I get my weeks mixed up <laughs> all right frequently let's work with Cheryl on this and mention some places here in the uh, greater metro Tucker area uh, it might be appropriate to keep it in mind, <laughs> Sunday crowds and things like that, and come up with some different places that we can stop uh, and eat. And we are having our time of prayer, 29th, 10 a.m., here at the church uh, in the Brown. Let's mark that on our calendars and, uh, and be there for that. And we have Billy Murphy preaching for us. Uh, next week, I think all of us know Billy fairly well. So let's keep all these things in mind. Take our bulletins home with us, mark our calendars appropriately, and participate as much as we can. And I will send us out now with a word of prayer. Powerful God, be with us. We spent time fellowshipping with each other, studying your word. Uh, we're without an excuse. Help us lead God, guard, and protect us as we go out into the world. And, and be mindful that it's our job to spread the gospel. And that we do that. We honor you. And we offer this prayer up. May our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you. 